Core Baptist Church for Bible study. Megan and I will be singing first this this evening. Um, Dad's kind of running a little late there, but uh, let's start. Come on. <laughs> okay. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest. Uh, there was supposed to be uh, some water here. There you go, sir. Well, good evening. Welcome once again to Concord Baptist Church Bible Study. Appreciate the girls going ahead and singing tonight. I'm running a little late, but let's go to Lord in a word of prayer. Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us home safely again tonight. Lord, we pray for the election going on in Georgia. Lord, uh, well, the polls should have just closed, or except the lines that might still be out there. But, Lord, we pray for uh, the Republicans to win the Senate seats, and, Lord, your will be done there. And, Lord, uh, we pray for Patricia and Phil and Stone and, and uh, Timothy, Lord, as they leave this evening to go to Washington. I pray that you... Give the driver of the bus uh, traveling mercies. Watch over and protect all the folks. And Lord, it, it's, uh, I think Pat said that most of the people that were going were older women that care about America. And she wanted to know where the men were. Well, I'm working, but anyway, Lord, I pray that you just give them traveling mercies. Watch over and keep everybody safe. And I pray, Lord, you can pull a victory out of that uh, tomorrow. And, uh, Lord, I pray for Danny Mallory and, Lord, his continued he healing. And, uh, Lord, Rush Limbaugh, we pray for him and his uh, cancer, Lord, that you might heal him if it be thy will. Give him strength. And, uh, Lord, pray for Teresa tonight, Lord, with the severe sinus infection lord that you'd uh, help the medicines get in there and do their job and and give her some relief 
Lord, we pray for all the folks in the church and their needs. And uh, pray for Walter, Lord, and his surgery coming up. And uh, Lord, I, if I missed any, uh, I just pray that you would intercede and and uh, do what needs to be done for those folks. And, and uh, Lord, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, your people, Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu and his family for salvation, President Trump and his family for salvation, and Lord, uh, their safety, and uh, Lord, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, Lord, I pray that you'd uh, grant us some more mercy here in this country. We don't deserve it, but Lord, we ask you that you might uh, just have some compassion on us, Lord, I know. Uh, we've been a wicked nation, and I just pray that you'd help us. Lord, we thank you for it. Uh, be with us tonight, Lord, as we look at the scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's see what kind of song we got here tonight. Yes, I know. 
help the vilest sinner. Amen. All right. If you got your Bibles, we'd like to turn to uh, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy, 1 Timothy. I want to go through 1st, 2nd Timothy and and uh, next few days and uh, see what it has to say. It's Paul's emphasis here will not be a doctoral statement as much as he is uh, of the Christian church, but a warning against false teachers and all. And so let's start in verse 1 of chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Think about that a moment. We know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Amen. How do you use the law lawfully? Amen. How do you do that? Well, in Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says that the law is the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Uh, he says in verse 9 here that knowing this, that the law was not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers. And by the way, slavery was never a sin in the Bible. It was men stealing, amen? Shanghai people. For liars, for perjured persons, that there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now, Paul says over in Romans chapter 3, that the law was to shut our mouth. He says here, we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. And then in Galatians 3, he says that it's our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Why? Because of the things I just read in chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, of who it's for. It's not made for a righteous man. It's to show you what you are. The Bible says, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. He said the law was to shut our mouth. Why? Because every man will proclaim his own goodness. Men will say, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so over here. I, I might have done some wrong, but I'm not as bad as that old drunk laying in the street over there. Hey, Amen. You ever done that? Comparing yourself to others? They that compare themselves among themselves, the Bible says, are not wise. Have you ever looked at someone and say, well, I know I'm a sinner, but at least I'm not that bad. Well, the Bible says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point is guilty of all. And uh, we're all sinners. We're born with a sin nature. And so the law, Paul's saying, is it's good if a man use it lawfully. How? To convict you, your conscience. When you were born, you were born with a conscience, the law of God written in your heart, the meanwhile accusing you or else excusing you. Uh, I asked a question in church the other day. I said, who taught you to lie? Nobody taught you to lie. You had a lying nature. Who told you it was wrong to lie? Well, nobody had to tell you it was wrong. Your own heart condemned you. Amen. The longer you go and the longer you lie, the harder you become. I told them it's like my hands when they get calloused. Uh, they can take a lot more heat than a young 
person's hand that doesn't have the calluses that I have. Uh, so as you grow, I, I don't remember the first lie I told because there were so many of them. But I do know that when I did lie, I would get red and get flustered till I got good at it. When I got better at it, they said I could lie with a straight face. But as I got older and the more I lied, the less it bothered me. And you know, I told one lie and, and thank God I can't even remember what it is now. But I, I told one lie and one story for so long and so often that I begin to wonder if it was really so. Did I really do that? And it was a lie the whole time. I was trying to make myself uh, look bigger. Now, I didn't have to do that anymore. I found a fork. And uh, anyway, a person keeps lying and lying and lying pretty soon. They get immune to their own conscience. So the preacher comes along and says that all men are liars and people get all upset and front. You know, well, I'm no liar. Yeah, you are. Bible says all men are liars. God cannot, it's not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. And he said, all men are liars, so you're a liar. That's what the law does. It shows us what we are. Uh, you take people that uh, hang around with whoremongers or whores or drunkards. Uh, it's the old saying that birds of a feather flock together and as long as you're hanging with other whores and whoremongers and drunkards and thieves, and uh, they don't feel convicted because everybody's doing the same thing. And so preacher comes along and he says that thou shall not lie or somebody shacking up as a whore and whoremonger. Uh, they're committing fornication. And all of a sudden they get all angry and upset. Why? Because the preaching of the law begins to do what their heart used to do before it became calloused. And that's why Paul says that for those that did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to get to the point to where nothing bothers them anymore. And that is a bad place to be because God's the only one that can save you. And if he's the only one that can draw you, and if he turns you over to a reprobate mind, you're just as good as in hell. The law is good if a man uses it lawfully. He used it to show people that they're sinners and that the Lord Jesus Christ died for sinners, that he might save a sinner from the penalty of death and hell. Amen. So he says, verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. You remember Paul said before, as touching the law, blameless. Uh, he could brag on the fact that as touching the law, he was blameless. He said, he did not know in sin and said, thou shalt not covet. And Paul got under conviction. He said, the Lord, he obtained mercy because he did it in, did it ignorantly in an unbelief. And he says, the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Paul says, of whom I am chief. Now think about that, Paul. This Pharisee that was converted on the road to Damascus says that he's the chief of sinners. And I remember Brother Sammy used to say when he'd come preach, if God could save the chief, he could save all the Indians too. Amen. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me, first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, 
according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith in a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and, and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. I know Paul said over in 2 Timothy in chapter 2, in verse 18, he says, or verse 17, he says, uh, talking about a couple others, he said, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have urged, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Have you departed from iniquity? Have you turned from your sinful, wicked ways and turned unto God through Jesus Christ? If you haven't, you need to. Chapter 2, 1 Timothy, verse 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now, notice what he said in verse 3. This is acceptable in the sight of who? God, God our Savior. Amen. That's a deity verse that says that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Do you see that? Yeah. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now, if you believe in Catholicism, they say you got to go through the priest and Mary. So there's me, there's the priest, there's Mary, then there's God. Through Christ Jesus. What's the scripture say? For there is one mediator. I don't have to go through any of them. For there is one mediator. I mean, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The only one that mediates between us is the Lord Jesus Christ that mediates between us and God. Folks, you're going to have to excuse me a minute, but my little household pet over there in the cage has let a very, very, very windy gasser. <coughs> Good creep. I don't know if they fed that dog, but they need to change whatever it was. Whew. Lord, help me. <coughs> Man. She's just laying there sleeping and like nothing happened. I'm over here, my eyes burning. Whew. Man. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. He said he gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. <clears throat> Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. I'll tell you folks, in this day and age, these women do not dress in modest apparel. I mean, you've seen them, uh, what do they call them, stretch things? Jeans, spandex. Spandex, yeah. I tell you what, with the way America is so overweight and obese, and these women go get them a pair of spandex, it's like two Volkswagen Beetles, one stuffed in each leg. Amen. And they're just as proud as they can be, just strutting around. And uh, you say, that, that might not excite you, as a man, but I'll tell you what, it'll sure make you sick if you're trying to eat dinner. My goodness. Or that old guy with the shorts. Yeah, the, my daughter and I were in a 
restaurant yesterday eating dinner and this old fellow was standing there in a pair of shorts. Oh, my gosh, he was at the salad bar. And I glanced over there and I thought, oh, my goodness. You know, old men have ugly legs. Uh, they've been through wars and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, it was terrible. Even men ought to be in modest apparel. Man. He said, uh, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. I tell you what, I, even my granddaughters uh, go out and buy a pair of jeans with holes already in them. And the, I said, you pay for them? My son said, no, I did. I mean, he's supposed to be a godly man. You're going to go out there and buy a pair of jeans with holes in them already to show your flesh through them? Come on. And and that tight, I mean, where's the where's the modest apparel at where people that are supposed to love God? When they're, well, I'm not even going there tonight. I'm going to have mercy. He says, In modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Peter says over in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 3, he says, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on an apparel. Listen, he didn't say you couldn't do your hair and wear gold and amen. But he says, don't let it be that. Let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. He said, for after this manner in the old time, holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. But he says, I'm going to read verses one and two. He says, likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may be may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So Peter picked up what Paul was saying. Don't let it be that outward adorning. Amen. And he says, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Yeah. The only time we're going to really see that, I think, is in heaven when they said there was silence for the space of 30 minutes. <laughs> Must not going to be in women in heaven, right? Just joking, ladies. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. The thing about what Paul's saying, he's telling us and giving us rules on how to live and how to be modest. Amen. Even men. I mean, you look at people, they go down to the beach. All they're in is colored underwear. That's all it is. And matter of fact, their undergarments probably cover more than their swimsuit, their bikinis and, and stuff like that. It's hard. A Christian, you know, uh, Christians don't go to the beach. You didn't know that, did you? Christians don't dress like that. Christians go to the coast. Amen. <laughs> but think about it. You're going to put your wife or your children in something like that. It's going to draw attention to them from these perverted men and women out here today. And why would a godly woman want to wear her clothes so tight? Is she trying to be proud of something? Want somebody to look and notice her or what? 
How about the men? Look how they dress. And I've seen women in dresses that were immodest also. Amen. If we're going to call ourselves Christians, we're going to have to go by what the Bible says a Christian is and how a Christian ought to live and how a Christian ought to dress. Amen. And some of you women, please cover up. You're not causing us to lust. You're causing us to puke. Anyway, ladies, God loves you anyhow. Amen. <laughs> All right. I'm done for tonight. Some of y'all probably already shut me off anyway. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this evening. Lord, watch over each and every person. Lord, be with us again. Lord, when we come back to chapter three of first Timothy, Lord, for it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Y'all have a good evening. Just remember, Jesus loves you, and I'm trying to. And don't forget. Happy New Year. This is how we know we've passed from death on the life, because we love the brother. Amen.